Hello, my friends. Let me just uh, sort out my lighting there. Give me one second. I'm just going to switch off the oven because actually it's really noisy. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Um, I'm feeling super duper blessed this morning. Um, I woke up feeling well. Um, hey, Denise. Hey, Caroline. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. It is middle of winter now, isn't it? <laughs> I had to set up extra lighting today. Look, you can see. See that little light, that big stand thing we, we bought the other day? I had to set that up because of uh, just how dark it is outside. There's no light anywhere. So I've got this lamp here. See? <laughs> I've got the light over there. Um... Yeah, I'm feeling super blessed. What a what a wonderful, wonderful day of surfing yesterday. Um, just to have waves like that in my hometown is, oh, that's like the ultimate Christmas present. So um, this morning I'm feeling super blessed. And, and yeah, my shoulders are a bit fucked and I'm sore, but I'm, I'm happy and raring to go. And I'm looking forward to a really good week this week on the, on the page, on the group, and uh, bring you guys some... Hopefully some, some insights that can help you live a happier life. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to serve. I'm here to hopefully give you perspective and hopefully help you genuinely live a better life. Like that, if, I can, if I can do that, my God, I can go to bed easy. Um, what a wonderful feeling. Even just one of you, even just once, I mean, that's enough. But I'm here. We're raring to go. I hope you guys are all well. Let's get straight to it. So what is it about acceptance? Acceptance, um, I, talk about it, I talk about it a lot in my book. Um, now, acceptance is, is incredibly powerful for happiness because acceptance points to the fact that um, we deal with these things called emotions. Now, everybody, hey, Laura. Good to see you. Um, we all deal with emotions. Everybody has um, that going on. It doesn't matter who you are. You could, you could have received a, a, a nasty text from somebody and, and your stomach flares up and you feel um, angry or something or, or worried or jealous or um, you might um, get some money news thing through the post that you didn't weren't expecting that kind of worries you a little bit you know we have uh, an in-law a, a relative uh, make us angry we i don't know life happens we suddenly just feel just unwell or, or unsure or, or worried or anxious or whatever even without any of those things affecting us like we we often with emotion emotion can come from nowhere like i don't know about you but for me, it can just come out of, out of nowhere sometimes, that feeling of just that strong emotion. But the first and most important thing to do when you ever feel emotion that you don't want or you don't like is to be mindful of it, is to not necessarily reject it, um, is to accept it in and have no shame no guilt, no embarrassment, no nothing for feeling what you feel. Because for feeling what you feel, for having shame, guilt and embarrassment for feeling what you feel elongates the emotion. And this is where so many people remain so unhappy for so long. So much longer than they, than they need to because what they're doing is they're feeling shame or guilt, or embarrassment, or anger for feeling what they feel. Now, if they didn't, if they just allowed it to happen, it would pass so much more quickly. The way to do that, now, now you might be thinking, yeah, okay, Will, that's great. Um, cheers for that, mate. Um, how'd you fucking do it? <laughs> how'd you actually, how'd you actually accept emotion? I mean, accepting emotion could change your life. That could be that could be huge, it'd be a huge breakthrough for you. I've seen it in many, many people, people who are able to just be more real, more authentic about their emotions. Like I, I wrote a quote the other day that was, um, be authentic. 
Because real is happier than pretending to be happy. I'll say that again. Be authentic. Because real is happier than pretending to be happy. And it got the most amount of shares and likes that I've ever had in my life. I think I almost had a thousand likes and something like 600 shares and it, it went a bit viral. And it spoke to everybody. There are, there are a few posts that I make that, that literally t tend to sort of speak to, you know, like they, they're, they're like a universal. And I think everybody can agree that authenticity trumps pretending to be happy every single time. And, and it's not to say that fake it till you make it doesn't work sometimes, because in a way, fake it till you make it, it, it is part of what we're going to come on to in a moment about accepting the challenge of trying to change the emotion, of trying to get back that good feeling. So there is something in that. There is, there is wisdom in fake it till you make it a, a bit, certainly for, for those of you who have it's worked for you in the past, because this is all individual. I'm not telling you what to do. What, what I do is right or wrong. Like, oh, this is the right way. You're always the wrong way. No. But, but in my experience... Hey, Marie. Hey, Catherine. In my experience, when people pretend to be happy, when they're not feeling very happy, it creates a ginormous amount of angst. And the angst is what stops them from actually doing something about it. I've got to say that again. When people pretend to be happy, And, and, and put on a front and put on a mask, it creates more angst than the emotion is creating. It creates more angst. It creates more problems. It's why vulnerability, the ability to be truly vulnerable, is so powerful. Because vulnerability and acceptance go hand in hand. If you have an emotion and you can be vulnerable to it and, and know that it's really there and not just shut it away, not just be hard and strong and tough and happy for everybody in the world, but actually be like, no, no, this is what is going on. What you can do then is, is, is crucial. This is the most inspiring part. Once you have accepted emotion for what it is, and that it's real and it's happening and it's there, you unblock what I call your emotional river. So inside of your body, I want you to imagine now for me that flowing through you all the time is this constant flow and cycle of energy or, or water or whatever you want to call it. A lot of you like the word energy. For me, it's a river. So I see it as water. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a surfer, so I would see it as water, but um, nice to see you, Tess. Nice to see you, Teresa. Um, hang on a second, guys. Add his guest. Yeah. Okay. I need to imagine that water is um, flowing through you or energy is flowing through you. Now, any time you reject an emotion, it puts a block up to that. And you get a, a blockage in your emotional river. Now, you'll, you'll notice somebody who is not accepting emotion because they, 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 they toughen up, they become all sort of almost a bit like brittle and a bit hard and they, they, they become a bit, um, they, their vibe is just a bit off and a bit weird. And you'll notice people who, on the other hand, are going through maybe emotion, but there's a softness to them and a tenderness to them. And you notice that, that their vibration is still high. You'll feel a good feeling from them. Now, those people, like the people I just spoke about, those people are able to go, okay, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm human. I'm going to have this emotion. I'm going to be going through this thing. And that's all there is to it. I can't pretend. And in not pretending to be happy, happiness returns. In not pretending to be happy, in to be happy. <laughs> In not pretending to be happy. I think too much sea, seawater got inside my brain yesterday. I'm going fucking crazy. In not pretending to be happy, we return to happiness. Um, what happens when you accept emotion as real is you're mindful of it. This is the big word we're teaching. 
you're mindful of it. And when you're mindful of it, it's like a sensation. And I, what I get when I get anxiety, because I've been quite open about that all the way through this process. And I'd be very happy to tell you that I'm not a perfect human being with, with perfect emotion. But when I get my anxiety or I get anxiety, um, I do two things. Number one, um, I notice it. So I notice that it's happening. So I don't just blindly carry on doing chores, carry on with my workout, carry on with this, carry on with that, trying to distract myself from the reality of this emotion. I don't go on my phone. The last thing I need to do is go on my phone when I'm dealing with emotion. That is the last thing I want to do. So I, I, I clear myself of any distractions and I become embraced into the moment. And it's the hardest thing to do, but it's the thing that will create the best result. Because when you come into the moment, you start to realize that, that yeah, it takes more courage to not be distracted by the phone, by the chores, by this, by that. It, it, to come away from distraction if you're feeling not how you want to feel and just embrace it for a moment. Just be very still and embrace it. Now, that seems like the most bizarre and strange paradox of all because everybody tells you, no, carry on and it'll be fine and make fake it till you make it and da da da. And, and actually, like we talked about already, I don't know if that, I mean, if you've tried that works for you, great. For me personally, in my experience, it makes me feel even more upset because then what I'm trying to starting to do is create a distrust with who I really am because who I really am is feeling something and I'm not acknowledging that. I'm not accepting that. And that's the big word. So the mindfulness key uh, aspect is where is the sensation? Because when I'm getting anxiety, I get it in my, it's like, it's like here in, 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 in my chest and my tummy. And so what I do is, and like I, I can almost get that feeling almost daily. It's not like, a, it's not a big deal. So what I do is I just, I just notice it and accept it. And I, and I try to understand where am I feeling this? Is it in my tummy or am I? And then once I've located it, I'll just start breathing through the process. Just breathing. And every time my mind wanders off to, oh my God, how am I going to cope? And what if this anxiety hangs around for, for the next month? And what about this? What about that? What if it starts? So when my mind starts playing tricks on me, I know it's just my mind. It's okay. I can't always control my mind. So I just bring everything back to the sens sensation. Where am I feeling it? Breathe through it. So there's two things I want you to remember. Where are you feeling it? Breathe through it. Where are you feeling it? Breathe through it. Locate it. Breathe. Locate it. Breathe. What, when you, what you're doing when you're doing that is you're telling your psyche, your soul, your mind, you're telling your everything, I'm with you. I trust you. And you've got this. And when you do that, happiness returns. And this is the key to mental health. And this is why a wellness warrior is a warrior. Because it takes courage. It takes courage to sit still and be in the moment when you're dealing with emotion. It takes courage to accept that it's really there. It takes courage to then just breathe through it and just feel the sensations of it being there. And don't judge it. Just observe the feeling and then it will pass. And it always does. It always passes. Mindfulness is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And all it requires you do is breathe and be conscious and be aware. Because when you do those things, you accept things as they are. And I know that you can do this because you are a wellness warrior. You are someone who is willing to stand up to the challenge of life, of emotion, and accept it and not reject it because you're strong enough for that because true strength i believe is the ability to be weak it's the ability to be open and expressive and say this is who i am and i am the very first person i want to be the first in the queue to admit that i don't have perfect mental health 
just in the same way they don't have perfect physical health. Because I think that we don't look at the two in the same way. Like we look at physical and mental health completely separately. Like mental health is like, oh, mental health. Oh, God, that's that's like a really, um, that's like, you know, that's off the, the status quo in terms of a subject. But in terms of body health, oh, my knee sore today. Like that's no big deal. But they're, they're just the same. We've got to create a bit more of a parallel between the two. And therefore what that does, I think, and this is what it does for me at least, I hope for you, is that when we create that parallel a bit more, it's like, oh yeah, oh, it's okay to have those emotions and that, those thoughts going on and yeah, oh, that's okay. Because it's just like having a, a swollen ankle. I mean, then it, the ankle heals and it passes and you move on and it's, that's how the mind works. And so, I want you to just do that. I want you to remember that being real, being authentic, sends a signal out to you that you trust who you are, you know who you are, and that will lead to greater levels of happiness than trying to be perfectly happy for everybody. Now, what I will say, what I will say, because I mentioned this at the beginning, is that, you know, what, where does the aspect of fake it till you make it come in? Because a lot of people do, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be feeling a certain way and they'll go for a walk or they'll have a workout or they'll go and have sex or they'll, they'll eat some chocolate or they'll, I don't know, there's thousands of things. And they will do what's called breaking the state. So whatever state somebody's feeling, they go and break it. Now, that can really work. It can get you out of a funk and it, it works for me too. Um, all you can ever know is where do you draw the line? Because only you can know your gut feelings. Like, do you, do you need to, 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 to just get out of the house? And, and go and do a workout and go and do a walk in nature and go and maybe meditate or whatever it may be. Or, or do you just need to sit still in the moment and be with this emotion, really be with it? Um, it's, 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 it's a fine line, but the point about accepting emotion, what normally happens with this, I'll, this is what I'll say. When, you, when somebody actually accepts emotion, they're more willing and able and aware to go and do that workout to go and do that walk, to go and sort themselves out because they know they need to. When somebody rejects emotion, they don't go and do that workout. They don't go and do that walk. They don't do their breathing, their stretching, those things because they start to shut down. Procrastination sets in, fear sets in, we tighten up. When we accept emotion as real and it's there and it's happening and it's okay to have it, like fuck me, is it okay to have it, my friend? Let me just be passionate about this today. It is so okay. Allow it. It, it. Just be there with it. When you are, suddenly it's okay. It's like, oh, it's okay. And then when you're with it and you're there, and then you start to go, right, I'm open. I'm courageous. I'm strong. What can I do? What can I go do to go to, to, to make this better? To go and um, maybe do a workout, go for a run, go do some yoga, go and maybe eat some food. Often that's a, a, a contributor to emotion that we don't want. Like, what is it I can do? Can I, can I sit more water? Can I get some more breathing in? And this is what it means to be a wellness warrior. And I know that you, my friend, can always stand up to the challenge because you are somebody who has a mind and that mind can believe in itself. And that is a conscious thought that you can have to just say, I can and I will. My friends, I'm going to leave it on, I can and I will. And... I love you loads. I love seeing your feedback. I've got a bunch of comments here, which I will have a look at. That's super cool. Um, leave me some feedback. I love to see your feedback. Um, also, really quickly, if any, any of you want to come to Dublin on the 13th of January, PM me if you need a link. Because I keep putting this link up, but actually people end up just sending me personal messages. So if you want to come to Dublin, um, and see me live in person, have a day of inspiration and fun and motivation, and really kickstart the year. Send me a personal message on my Will Foster coaching page, and uh, I'll I'll get back to you on that. Send your links and all that. Those other things. If you have any questions, please please do ask. Guys, it's been a joy. Please leave some feedback. I'd love to hear from you. What you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy, what you'd like to see more of, what like you'd like to see less of. This is our wellness warrior experience not just mine this is our experience we're in this thing together and i'm here to here to serve
um, I'm now going to go and take my wife a biscuit that I was baking for her because she loves these little biscuits that I make. Um, they're like maple syrup, butter, buckwheat flour and, and, and things. And um, I normally demolish my load on a Sunday. As my sister, if my sister was watching this, she'd be like, <laughs> Will, Will eats so many biscuits on a Sunday. I do, my friends. It's my one day of the week where I, I think like, what did I have last night? It's my one day of the week of sugar and I had probably, <laughs> I'd say like 14 biscuits. Anyway, it was lovely. Um, but I always save my wife a couple of bits of dough. So I make her another batch in the morning the next day because I know that she likes to have a Monday one. I become very much like, whoosh, it's Monday. We're back to salads and, and, and fish and good food. Um, but she likes to have a biscuit. So I'm going to take her biscuit up now. She's not very well, bless her. And she's got a cold. And I think I'm going to now take the week off. I was going to be in work this week, but now I'm just going to have it off. And I, uh, <clears throat> that then means I'm off for Christmas pretty much, which is very, very exciting. Three weeks off, which is, which is just beautiful. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a, a bit of tea and biscuit. And uh, guys, I love you loads. Have a great day. I will see you soon.